Eukaryotes. They once weren't, and then they were. In this video, I'll explore when eukaryotes came to be and how that's thought to have occurred. Before jumping into it, click the thumbs up button because I'm hoping that behaviorally acknowledging the quality of this video before actually watching it will create an irrational level of investment in it because you liked it after all, so it must be good. Let's get into it. Eukaryotes are the third and last of the three domains of life to come to be. Bacteria and archaea, the other two domains, preceded eukaryotes. The first life that ever existed doesn't fit into any of the three domains of life that we have now. But for our three that are around, bacteria came first, and then archaea, and both according to genomic data as early as 3.4 billion years ago. And every last species of both bacteria and archaea are single-celled organisms. But moving forward more than 1.5 billion years, sometime between 1.84 and 1.65 billion years ago, the first eukaryote appeared on the scene. The eukaryote is an altogether different kind of beast than the prokaryotes that preceded it. They're much larger than prokaryotes, and all eukaryotes, or rather all of them that we know of, reproduce sexually, rather than with the cloning and horizontal gene transfer of the prokaryotic world. Another difference, a massive difference in fact, is the amount of genetic material each one has, with eukaryotes often having a thousand times the amount of genetic information. And yet another difference is found in how those genetics are stored, with the eukaryotes having the genetics kept in the center of the cell in a little sac called the nucleus. Prokaryotes, in contrast, have no membrane about the genetic information. And furthermore, beyond the genetic information, the eukaryotes have little enclosed structures within them called organelles that carry out functions for the cell. It's from eukaryotes that all multi-cell creatures, including eventually us, will come from. So the first eukaryote was in fact our direct ancestor. But for these earliest eukaryotes, we know very little. We don't know if they were sexually reproducing, and we don't know how to classify them in any known eukaryote groups. But we do know that they were eukaryotes. The oldest evidence we have of a eukaryote comes to us in fossil form from the Changchun system of northern China. This oldest eukaryote that was found is classified as an acritarch, which is a classification for the unclassified. So by saying that it's an acritarch, that reflects our inability to place it in any known eukaryote group. It dates to 1.62 billion years ago, so we know for sure that eukaryotes were around by 1.62 billion years ago, and presumably at least a little bit earlier, so let's place the latest possible date for the first eukaryote at 1.65 billion years, or circa 12.2 billion years after the advent. But don't think that because this is the oldest one found that there weren't many earlier ones still. Differentiating eukaryotes and prokaryotes in the fossil record is often near impossible, and the earliest eukaryotes were presumably smaller than the ones around now, which would make the task of differentiation harder still. With the Chan-Chun find, thankfully, the eukaryote could be identified both from its size as well as the patterns left from its cell wall. With these limitations on being able to detect eukaryotes in the fossil record, however, it may be wiser to base the eukaryote origin date off of genomic data, and that gives an earliest date of 1.84 billion years ago for the origin. So we now have a sense of when eukaryotes came about. That eukaryotes came to be, there can be no question about. But how they came to be is a trickier question. The leading theory is that of endosymbiosis. The idea, and as we'll see, this idea has some interesting evidence for it, is that a larger archaeal cell developed a symbiotic relationship with a smaller bacteria, and across time, the smaller bacteria became incorporated inside the archaeal host cell and we had our first eukaryote, or proto-eukaryote anyway. The eukaryotes that we have around have significantly more going on inside them than just the single mitochondrion, which is what this first one would have had. Sometime after the first eukaryote, some eukaryote had another symbiotic relationship, which then turned endosymbiotic, and this time it was with another bacteria, a photosynthesizing one, and thus came to be the ancestor of all plants. Let's now get a better sense of what the theory of endosymbiosis means over here. Based on how modern prokaryotes engage in symbiotic relationships, the leading idea is that the initial archaea and bacteria that came together started off by crossfeeding, where the waste of the bacterium was used by the archaean, and eventually the bacteria itself found protection within the membrane of the archaea. Across time, the bacterium lost its cell wall, leaving behind the mere membrane, 
that separated it from its host cell, and the archaea insulated its own genetic material within a nucleus. The energy that was produced by this bacterial cell, which is now a mitochondrion within this archaeal cell, were sufficient for the needs of the archaeal cell, and across time the archaea lost its own ability for energy production. These early eukaryotic cells would have one moved around and two consumed other organisms for food. But one eukaryote went through this endosymbiosis again, this time with a photosynthesizing bacterium, and across time the energy provided from the sun through this bacterium, which we would now call a plastid, enabled the cell to lose the ability for movement and to focus its energies on self-protection through strong cellulose walls and finding a space with significant sunlight with no need to consume other organisms. Plants had come to be. There's a significant amount of evidence that mitochondria and plastids originated as something other than the cell type, which it's now a defining feature of. For one, mitochondria and plastids are separated from the external cell by a membrane. And in that sense, they never really became part of the eukaryotic cell, and they're still on their own. Beyond that, both the mitochondria and plastids have their own private collection of genetic material within them. In fact, when reproducing, mitochondria and plastids do so through dividing, rather than being made by the eukaryotic cell. If you remove the mitochondria and plastids, the eukaryote's helpless at producing more. Lastly, mitochondria and plastids produce proteins using biochemical processes in a similar way to prokaryotes, in contrast to the method used by the cytoplasm in eukaryotes. The broad picture is the eukaryotic cell existed by 1.65 billion years ago, and likely a lot earlier still. How this happened isn't fully clear, but the leading theory of endosymbiosis seems to be on the right track. And that story will either become more fully fleshed out, or it may fall apart at the seams. Only time will tell. Pay attention to this space. For the School of Vic History, Shlomo Muller reporting, I'm out.